Hey guys, Logan here, and for those of you that are new, I'm currently building a race engine from scratch uh, for my motorcycle. Now there's a lot of designing, casting, and machining going on in the last video. I had to go at casting another barrel to try to reduce the porosity I had in a previous barrel. Now, overall, this casting was a failure. It has a defect in it, but I want to see if I fix the porosity, so I'm going to quickly cut the feeding system and the gating system off, run the boring head through it, and see what the bore would look like. So, on to that now. Now, I'm quickly just going to clean out the water jacket so that all this crap doesn't make a mess on my mill. Might as well practice getting it to the right size while I'm here. So there we are, this was bored out as quickly as I could and at 63 mil it was looking pretty mint. I thought I'll take it to final size, practice hitting a dimension and a little bit more porosity come through as I was going uh, through the wall thickness. Still an improvement over the previous barrel uh, but yeah, still some work to do and one thing I just learned in my research is that you can tune the burner so the propane burner in the furnace apparently uh, yeah if it's running rich it's going to cause more porosity so I've already actually got an air fitting on the furnace so I'm going to crank up the air uh, which I haven't been using at all it does mean that air compressor is going to be bloody annoying but oh well <laughs> and turn down the fuel a little bit lean it out which should create a pretty good atmosphere in the furnace as far as porosity is concerned and so now we've got to turn that 3d print into a mold so once again that means weighing out the investment and the water hydrating the cat mixing it all together and putting it in the flask and then chucking it in the kiln to burn it out and while that's cooking away in the kiln i want to see if i can get my fancy guillotine throttle body operational now first things first i want to work on the return so it's going to actually have an external spring so i'm going to come up with a wee arm some sort of retaining thing that should sort the return side of it then i'll move on to the pull side And the last piece of the puzzle is this wee cap which I just whipped together a couple minutes on the CAD and then threw it on 3D printer. Hurry up. Alright, so it shouldn't be too hard to put these pieces together. So that goes like that. That slots in there like that. Put the spring over the end. Put it in the groove at this end. Then just got to put this over there like that and then put the spring in that slot and there we are so it returns as it should just quickly put that on so obviously I need to work on the pull side but pretty simple now it automatically returns and as I look at this um, it's got a pretty short travel. I think it's like 20 mil or 24 mil. Uh, now that means I can reduce the overall stick out probably by half. Um, I'm not too worried about that at the moment. There's plenty of room uh, in that area. But yeah, it is sort of a bit odd looking <laughs> hanging out like that. The burnout cycle is now complete. So we're going to have another crack at casting in the morning. Just very carefully lift it out, very carefully roll it around upside down and very carefully blow it out. I do not want to damage it. Right, so I've just given the mold a very gentle clean out this time and yeah, looking down inside there, it looks pretty good. So, fingers crossed. I'm going to have a go at tuning the burner while the kiln is heating up. So. This is my makeshift uh, <laughs> air regulator. Essentially, I just tighten that, and the more I tighten it, 
it puts more air in. So it's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to light the torch and essentially see how much air I can add to it before it doesn't want to run and then wind it back a tad. So it wasn't too bad. It seems to be burning pretty clean so that's good and uh, now I'm going to quickly cut up some aluminium. Ow! Dumbass! 2.42. Sounds good. I'm even cleaning the aluminium and the crucible to ensure there is no contamination. It's like tuning a carb. Ooh. And there we are, I have demodeled that casting about a whole two weeks ago and yes, surprise, surprise, it was a failure. Um, and I don't even know why this time. It had extra porosity, a whole bunch of extra shrinkage uh, compared to the one that I'd just done, which really sucks. Um, and so, yeah, it takes a lot out of me when I'm continuously failing like this. So I really need to give the casting a bit of a break because uh, I'll just end up giving up on the project altogether. Um, and so, I'm back onto the crankshaft and I have all the drills and reamers to bore out this big end so let's get onto that now. I have it dialed in vertically. Just flattening the side of the crankshaft because that lip is right on where I wanted to start my hole. I bought the longest centre drill I could find and it's still not long enough so I'm using a bigger drill just to start the wee divot. Right, so that's the pilot hole done, and you can see there with the mirror, it actually looks like it stayed relatively straight. That was the one I was the most worried about. I was expecting there to be just one hole in the other end because the drill would uh, meet the oil gallery and just follow it, but uh, yeah, so far so good. Right, time for the last operation. A little bit nervous about this, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Pretty happy with those operations on the crankshaft. Uh, the hollowed out big end seemed to work not too bad and got that oil gallery in there as it should. So I'm gonna put that aside because I really want to have a, another quick look at the oil pressure side of the crankcases. So essentially, because we're converting it to a plane bearing from the roller bearing crank, that um, increased pressure will actually need an oil pressure relief valve. So. I have this here which is literally just a, a generic oil pressure relief valve out of like a sports bike and it's literally just a spring with a wee plunger and at a certain pressure it uncovers these wee relief ports and it lets that excess oil pressure go to the other side of the oil pump which uh, essentially just feeds it back into the system instead of having to pump it through the filters and everything again. Um, now that's a little bit of a pain in the butt. On the crankcases here this is the pickup side goes through the pump, comes out here the pressure side. Now there's nowhere in this immediate vicinity where I can put this valve but I have come up with a plan. So on the bottom this is a blanking oil gallery for the pickup 
and this is where the feed goes straight to which goes to the oil cooler so I'm going to make a wee adapter which uh, links the two between here I've bought some drills and reamers and taps so I'm going to be able to actually fit this in the crankcase and I'll have a wee sort of uh, in banjo bolt connecting them both and yeah that should work very nicely now I wanted to work on the gears as well for the oil pump so uh, a lot of people in the last video are like don't double your oil speed you're going to have cavitation which I completely agree that's uh, not something I want after more research and uh, recommendations from you guys I actually think that with all the added restrictions in this oil system the stock pump is actually going to be too big <laughs> which might not make much sense but essentially without all the oil cooling holes in the cylinder head and without the the big hole for the needle uh, roller bearing in the crank um, yeah the pressure is going to be much higher so I think the only issue is going to be this gear so on the R6 on race bikes on everything that uh, runs plain bearings they're generally chain driven oil pumps or steel gear driven oil pumps this is a plastic gear and i'm not sure i want to trust it with uh, essentially the lifeblood of the engine and i'm thinking yeah the oil pump probably will be too big uh, we'll soon figure that out once we get it running i'll be able to test it with the oil pressure tester and then we'll know for sure and then i'll be able to put a smaller pump in make all that work now i used a dividing head for the sprocket on the crank i had to give that back to the guy i was borrowing it off because he needed it and so I have another dividing head here which I got given by one of you guys. It's not in very good condition though. <laughs> if you have a look at this, it's very rusty, but I've got all the nuts and bolts loose for the pivoty part, and it's C solid, um, and it kind of looks quite crap. So I'm gonna clean this up. I bought a whole bunch of white vinegar Apparently I can just soak this in this and it will dissolve most of the rust and then I'll give it a good clean, a good coat of oil. So I'm going to chuck this in the bucket with some vinegar and uh, see what that will do. So I'm going to leave that soaking overnight and I'll check on it in the morning but that does mean once again I am waiting for tools and stuff to modify the crankcase so I can fit this oil pressure relief valve. So on that note this has been Logan from the Motorcycle Forge. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.